This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yes, everybody. Hi, how are you? I'm Alex Bennett, and this is The Ramble. The Ramble goes from now, as you know, until, uh, 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 well, until um, uh, midnight uh, on the uh, east coast of the United States. It's Eastern time and you can adapt for that and tell what time you're there We're, it's just like it's one it's uh, six minutes past 10 here in a very snowy up to our neck in snow new york okay anyway as we do uh, once a week we love to check in with a friend of ours who we just enjoy talking to you know there's something about people who are good conversationalists and this guy is the best I was just telling our good friend Larry Bubbles Brown, who has been sick, right? You've been, uh, you had the, uh, you, you've been not feeling good, and then I, uh, I was. Everyone out here is getting the flu, so I thought I was getting that, but it's not. My wife had a, a cold that turned into a bronchial infection, uh, that uh, is um, uh, that then uh, turned into a yeah, bronchial infection. Then she had to have antibiotics. Three weeks later, she was better. Yeah, those bronchi, I think they're a nightmare. Yeah, but everybody's been getting something, and it turns in. One guy turned into pneumonia. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, what the hell. Anyway, so, uh, uh, but you said you had the flu, and I told you that it probably wasn't I thought flu. I was coming down with it. I wasn't sure, but you said uh, it's got to be a fever, right? It has to, you have to have a fever in order for it to be the flu. Uh, yeah, the flu flu comes on really quickly too. Uh, yes, and but it, 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 what I'm saying is that you need to um, uh, you need to have a temperature because that, otherwise it's not the flu. So everybody everybody goes, I got the flu because they were really sick, but they got a they had a bad cold. They got a cold. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, but bad colds, you know, they, they they can turn into pneumonia, bronchial infections. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Alex <laughs> Bennett. Welcome to 2018. <laughs> Welcome to Alex Bennett's medical waiting room. Uh, <laughs> and on top of that, last, I'm a little tired. I got thrown out of bed last night with a really sharp earthquake. Oh, I thought you said you got thrown out of bed last night by a woman. That would have been <laughs> a really sharp earthquake last night? Yeah, man. It was, must have been 3 in the morning or something. It was just... Uh, it was really, really violent. I ran for the door. I thought, oh, God, this is it. Well, did, they, did, did they report it in the news and everything? Yeah, so 4.8, which doesn't sound that huge, but... Uh, it's, that's not... That's, I, I've been in a 4.8. They're not fun, you know. No, it was centered under the Claremont Hotel in Berkeley. Right. So really? That's the, uh, that's the Hayward Fault, which is... They, that's a big one they always thought was going to go next. Wow. Wow. So that could that could lower housing prices if we get that one to go. I miss earthquakes though. They're kind of fun if you don't get damaged. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean they it's kind of like uh they start and then you sit there and wait and say how bad is this one going to be because they start yeah, rumbling. Yeah. They, there are two kinds. There's a kind that starts to rumble and gets more rumbly and then there's the other one's like a crack. Yeah, this was a crack last night. It bang out of nowhere. Yeah. Wow. And anything fall in your uh, apartment? Not or? in my dumpy apartment, but I guess some of the stores over the East Bay have people who have stuff. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, you know, when you're a minimalist. You don't have anything to lose. Well, the big Loma Prieta. That was now. That was a tremor. You know that was yeah. You were in the you were in the worst part of uh, you could be for that. That was almost a seven, wasn't it? Six point nine. Six point nine, uh, and I got to tell you, folks, six point nine is really something. Uh, because when Bubble says a four or something, that's like hundreds of times less, isn't it? What? How? What? Do you know it, how the? I don't understand how they rate it, but I think for each tenth of a point that goes up, it's like a thousand times stronger. <laughs> oh, God. Or a tenth of a point, yeah. Yeah. 
A thousand times stronger? Yeah, it's, it's insane. I don't know how they measure these things, but um, yeah, I'm so I'm surprised your uh, building actually stood up where you were. Well, I, 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 you know something, I found that it was kind of like um, fingers on a hand. You know, you've got your indentations between the fingers, and you've got the tips of the fingers, and and it was kind of like that. You know, because the apartment house next to me was in really bad shape. Mine. Uh, I had cracks in the wall, which I left, by the way, when they came in to fix everything, I said, leave that crack, because I wanted a remembrance mm -hmm. of the earthquake. Um, but it was, uh, it was uh, the, the apartment stood, the, stood, stood uh, pretty tall, and I think probably it had to do, we were on the corner, and maybe we were on some kind of solid land or something, because the trouble was, we lived in the marina, which is built on the remnants of the, uh, what was it, the, uh, uh, the, the, the remnants of the uh, Pan fair. Pan Pacific the, Exposition. Pan uh, Pacific Exposition, uh, which uh, was huge, I mean, amazing. And um, what they used for, the, that was all water. And what they used for the landfill was the rubble from the 1906 earthquake. Mm -hmm. And so, what happens when you fill in water with, you know, dirt and stuff like that and then rubble is that if you get an earthquake, it liquefies. So really you kind of turn into a little bit of mush and it, so it wasn't solid ground. So that's why the marina got hit so yeah. hard. If you go above uh, what, Lombard Street, which is the street that go, right that goes uh, uh, across above Lombard, there was no damage. But right. below that, that's where all the landfill was. So it's that I, landfill, yeah. I was living on landfill. <laughs> so and that, uh, I've seen pictures of that Pan Pacific Exposition. It did look like it was incredible. The stuff they built for that. Well, the, you know, the Palace of Fine Arts, which uh, if everybody looks at it, you see this 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 thing. It looks like a temple, right? Yeah, that's the last remnant of it. Yeah, guess, so. that was small. That was one of the smallest structures at the Pan American Exposition. Uh, the big ones, I've seen photographs, huge. Yeah, amazing. But they were all made out of plaster. They weren't, you know, they weren't meant to be permanent. Right. So they were kind of like movie sets, you know. And what happened was all the other ones, of course, got torn down and they built homes there and uh, people started living in, uh, in the marina. But they kept the Palace of Fine Arts. But what happened about 1948, that started falling apart. I remember driving by with my parents and seeing like chicken wire. <laughs> they went in and redid the entire Palace of Fine Arts. They did it in concrete. They started putting a concrete facade on it. And now it, of course, isn't going anywhere. But uh, they saved it. Uh, but that was the last remnant of the, of the uh, Pan American Exposition. Does anybody care about this, folks? I think it's inter <laughs> I think it's fascinating. I think it's it interesting. is, and, and you know why they had the exposition? Because there was a Pan America. I don't know what. Well, because of the 1906 earthquake, the city was so devastated. They had uh, they wanted to show the world that they could be open for business, and they wanted to get people back out here again. Oh, is that the reason? Yeah. Son mm -hmm. of a bitch. Well, that's a good reason. Yeah. You know. Uh, now that must have been a hell of an earthquake. Uh, I, I'm trying to remember how strong it was. You know, it it was a strong earthquake. I don't know if it was as strong as the Loma Prieta. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, they didn't have uh, the things to measure it then. Yeah, but uh, but but, but and it, the buildings were so weren't built nearly as strong. Well, stuff. the but thing was... everything in the city was destroyed. Well, the, the reason it was destroyed wasn't the earthquake. Yeah. The earthquake broke the gas mains, and the gas mains caught fire, and then the city went up in smoke. That's mm -hmm. that's really what happened. Uh, they called the San Francisco earthquake, but, uh, but if you say it properly, most people call it the San Francisco earthquake and fire. And it was the fire... If, 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 if there hadn't been a fire, the destruction would have been minimal. So right, yeah. right. And I think the I think Van Ness Avenue was used as a fire. That was the fire line. They, yeah. 
try to stop the fire. Yeah, but I mean, uh, you know, the, the town was almost ver most of the the downtown area, and it was destroyed, virtually destroyed. I think not the whole town wasn't destroyed. You know, but uh, it, you know, uh, it made for a good movie. So what the hell? Did. yeah. <laughs> I love disasters. The other night I was looking at, uh, you probably remember the uh, the Coconut Grove fire in Boston? I was reading about that. It, no, tell me about it. It was a nightclub in Boston, 1942, and uh, a fire broke out. It ran through so quick it killed 492 people. And that's a lot. And uh, they, it was really cold outside. They, they said the, swir for the fire swept through so quick and so toxic they found people with their drinks sitting at their chairs dead <laughs> and, yeah and some of the people that got out the, the, the where they they breathed in the air that was so hot and then when they brought them outside it was really cold and they took one breath of air and they just died like that wow uh, the um, um, the big one here in New York years ago was the triangle shirtwaist factory fire I saw that was listed in the yell. Yeah, my almanac's got a list of notable fires, and that was in the Triangle Shirt. That was around 1910 or something. Yeah. Now people say, "What's a shirt waist?" They don't make them anymore. I don't think. Uh, uh, but I think there was a shirt that went under a shirt or something like that. And this was the days when they employed childhood labor. You know, working at the uh, working the thing, and they were paid very cheap wages, and they were kind of poor people who were employed there and uh, of course the guy who ran the place didn't care about the safety factor and the place burned down and I can't remember how many people were killed in that but it was considered a major major event here in New York and set into into play a lot of laws regarding safety of workers in in the workplace uh, they didn't account for Harvey Weinstein but <laughs> You know, gee, Harvey Weinstein will become the butt of jokes for years to come, right? I would think so. Yeah, he last who I hear last night, uh, Paul Sorvino, I guess his daughter was uh, assaulted by him. Well, he was. He, she, he wants to kill him. <laughs> no, she came. He came on to her, and she rebuffed him, and then was. Oh, he blackballed her. Literally blacklisted from Hollywood because Harvey you, said, don't you hire her. You know, how did you get I was, I was up on. for the, yeah, you know, I was at the tail end Just because somebody won't fuck you, there's no reason to take draft. away their livelihood. <laughs> Why, if we had to blacklist everyone that wouldn't fuck us? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody be working. <laughs> it would be, it'd be a depression. <laughs> Yeah, well, instead we have the depression. So, um, yeah, yeah, but what other kind of, so you've been reading up on, on tragedies. Been reading up well, on your, tragedies. Well, your, your source of reading material is so uplifting. I know. It's just, I would, that was, dying by fire would be a horrible way to go. I guess that's why I was looking at those. I hate, uh, that would be so painful. Any other great fires that you saw there? There was a bunch of them. There was, uh, what was the other one? Um, I was looking at plane. I always like the plane crashes. Um, there was well, you always, you always talked about plane crashes. That the yeah. you you like to read about plane crashes and read yeah. the cockpit. <laughs> yeah, the black box, which I think I think I had some copies of the audio recording of the black box crash. And so, and uh, uh, any time it was in writing, the last thing in the in the transcript was sound of impact. Sound of impact. <laughs> <laughs> What uh, what about you fascinates you about tragedy? Because it makes your life feel better, or what? Uh, just that uh, I think we all, I think life itself is tragic. Maybe that's it. So I just we all go out a different way. So I just like to see how things happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, so um, uh, what did you do over the new year? See, well, I actually. Uh, I, I worked with David Tell at the Masonic, mm -hmm. and I had not been in that place since I worked. You had a show there in July of '91. The Masonic Auditorium, yeah, yeah. We did one show there, I believe. Yeah, 
Well, maybe it was a New Year's show. Time. Was it a New Year's show, was it? I can't remember. The, the one you did was July. You, you, it was to celebrate you had just come back. Oh, okay, from, yes, from Miami. yes. Miami, remember this? Yes, 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 yes. It was the Alex Bennett comeback special yeah. or whatever. Yeah, that's a beautiful house. Yeah, they've redone it. I hadn't been in there so I hadn't been in there in 26 years. They've done a lot of work to it, and uh, it's an interesting building. I don't know. It was built in 1958. It holds. It holds. It's still livable. It holds how many people? Almost 3,000. It's huge. Yeah, I, I I sold that place out. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, 3,000 people. Wow. Yeah. And did you sell out? We got about half full. Half full. Yeah, that's you're a trouble. You're the king. That, well, that's the trouble. That's really the trouble with uh, taking a house that has 3,000 seats. you got to fill them. And mm -hmm. if you don't fill them, half full doesn't look good. Yeah, and uh, 1,600 people anywhere else would have been fantastic. Yeah, if you'd uh, done it. Look, yeah. look at all these empty seats and go, wow. Um, you know, that's why I did most of my shows at the Great American Music Hall, which I think held... What, 500 people, something like that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, because then th that was easy to sell out. Yeah. But, yeah, you, you know, I did do three, I guess I did 3,000 at the at the Masonic because it was a sellout. That I remember. We kept having, every one of my shows was a sellout until a certain point. And then the bottom started to fall out of it. So that's the way it was, you know, with the... Uh, you know, with the shows, but I I got really depressed when you know the bottom did fall out of it because I had been doing the thing for years and years and years and years and years with never uh, a, a sparse house. So you know, uh, yeah. I in fact when the tickets would go on sale, I would start calling every every hour to see what the take was. And I remember the fastest show we ever had was a show we did with Bob Goldthwait. Um I think maybe it was either the first one or Bobcat goes to Hollywood or whatever. And that one, God, it was, uh, uh, I think we sold out in an hour and a half. <laughs> that was a circle star, right? It, no, yes, I think so. Yeah, but I mean, we really sold out fast. And I, uh, that was, that was a kind of, uh, you know. You know, those were the days. Those were the days. They were. You know, and I, I never like. You know, everybody works on New Year's because it's a good money night, but it's not a particularly fun show night. I never, never thought. And yeah. Although the shows you did at the uh, Palace Fine Arts were fun. Well, they, they they were fun. We did have a good time on them, um, and uh, it was, uh, um, you know, it it. it what I what I I was telling uh, Pearl this yesterday. What I used to, or no, uh, Durst the other day. Uh, uh, what I loved about it was we used to do them at the Palace of Fine Arts. That's that big thing we were talking about earlier from the Pan American Exposition, mm -hmm. and we would do it at the Palace of Fine Arts, and um, it was just a block from where I lived. <laughs> no, that's great. So I would uh, put on my clothes, right? Walk, Walk over, over to gig. <laughs> did two shows, right, mm -hmm. and walked home ten thousand dollars richer. I often thought that was the best way to spend New Year. You know, people say, "Don't you miss having to be in a little party during New Year?" It's fuck it. <laughs> you know, I make this money, and everybody else got paid well. By the way, I walked out with ten grand, but they walked out. Some of them, you know, the headliner would walk out with something like five grand. Mm -hmm. You know, so, um, you know, and I remember, you remember, I was pretty good pay, wasn't I? You were generous, yes. Yeah, we, we I, because my, I'm in show business, I didn't want anybody else in show business to starve. And my business manager always was willing to give decent money, too. And, you know, most people, when we came to them with the offer for a show, never argued the money. Never said that's not enough or whatever, you know, so... And I, and I also knew I had to work with these people on the radio, too, so I didn't want uh, bad will to ensue because I was a cheapskate. And the, you know, there's enough money to go around. I mean, I'm, I'm one year I think I made maybe a hundred grand or something on all the shows that I did. And uh, wow. come on, how much money do I need to earn? You know, of course, I didn't wind up having any of it after it was over with because I spent it like crazy. Uh, 
And you know who I spent it on? Comics. Uh, probably gad- gadgetry. Well, gadgetry, but comics. I would go out, I would say to somebody like Goldthwait, hey, why don't we go out to dinner? And we'd go out to dinner. And guess who picks up the check? Oh, that's I, right. You always were taking us out to dinner. That's right. Yeah. I would always pick up the check. And the reason I would always pick up the check was uh, it was tax deductible. And secondly, because I always had a theory that when you go out and you say to somebody, let's go out to dinner, the person who makes the most money should pick up the check. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. And so I, nobody, no, it got to a point where some of the comics never even reached. You know, so I, can I help? <laughs> you know, nobody ever <laughs> asked me that. They just said, okay, uh, Bennett's invited me to dinner. I eat tonight, you know. So, but and I was happy to do it, you know, happy to do it. But when all was said and done, and I was let go, and I no longer had a job, I no longer had any money either, you know. And, and uh, people say, well, how do, you, how, do you, how do you spend all that kind of money? And I said, it, my, and I asked my business manager once, I said, why can't I save any money? He said, because you got partners. I said, what partners? He said, uh, the United States of America and California. Yeah, that's, that's half of your money right there. Yeah, that's half of your money right there, absolutely. So, you know, it was, uh, uh, um, let me see here. Uh, so anyway, I... I uh, uh, well, that was my that was my uh, whole thing in San Francisco. Between that and the running the live commercials, I did okay. Uh, and now I'm sitting here pinching pennies. So, as we yeah. all do as we get older. Well, you must have saved a certain amount of money. You've always lived a very frugal life. Yeah, but I never made a lot of money, so I just. Uh Hope I have enough to carry me to the grave. Yeah, but but you did squirrel some away, right? Yeah, yeah. Lived off some of it in those lean years. Had to dip into the savings. Yeah. And you know, you work a lot. You really do compared to. I mean, like I talked to Pearl. Pearl doesn't work that much. Yeah, I still work. Although the uh, the clubs pretty much pay what they were paying thirty years ago. So with inflation, you're working for about a third of what you used to get. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, like, how'd you get the gig with Attell? Uh, he asked for me. So. Yeah. Oh, good. See? Yeah. 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 So, if yeah. I, got, I got famous friends. They can just carry me along. Rob Schneider gave me some good gigs this year. And... Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, but I hate to tell you this, that sometimes uh, comics just want to work with somebody as an opening act who they can top. Oh yeah, you don't want somebody you can. Uh, you don't want someone that goes out there you can't follow. You don't want somebody up there that spoils the room for everybody. Yeah, you know. even if I kill, I'm easy to follow. So because I'm not high energy. So. Yeah, you have a, a, yeah. So anyway, how's how's the tell doing? I haven't seen him in years. Uh, he seemed to be doing all right. He doesn't. He used to come out here more. I don't see him much anymore. So he's mostly in New York. So yeah. He misses, uh, you know, he when he had that insomnia show, he was had a higher profile. So I think he misses that. Well, TV gives you a high profile, and when yeah. you no longer have the TV thing, your profile kind of kind of wanes. Um, in my case, uh, you know, it's it, if I'm on radio, I got a high profile. If I'm not on radio, people forget, and they forget quickly. Oh, it's amazing. Do you ever notice how people who have TV shows, you know, hit TV series, oh, man, they're on everything. They're asked to MC a, this, and they're asked to do that, and they give them a special, and the blah, 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 and they're all on that show, and then they leave the show, and it's whatever happened to. Yeah. <laughs> and TV shows are really fleeting, you know? I mean, you don't have a TV show anymore, and, you know, I'm sorry, nobody talks about you. That's it. it. I know it's depressing, but it is. Yeah, so. fame is fleeting. I think is the uh... fame is fleeting. Yes, that's what the guy I was telling the story the other night on the air. That's what this guy. Uh, they always when they had a, a a general or something come back from some whatever he did in Rome, and they would hold this big parade, right? And he'd be leading it. There'd be a guy in the chariot with him, whispering in his ear, "Famous fleeting." Famous mm-hmm. fleeting. 
Uh, and it's true. You know, one day they're cheering you, and the next day they know who the fuck you are. In fact, yeah. they, they don't care who the fuck you are. So, you know, I mean, uh, uh, and nobody knows better than me. You know, I mean, I haven't worked in four years. Okay? Yeah. I'm sure everybody's pretty much forgotten, you know. and Well, judging by the number of people that come up to me in the clubs and ask about you, I wouldn't, you are, you are remembered. So. I think I made an impact in San Francisco, but you talk to anybody, say, under a certain age, and they never heard of Alex Bennett in San Francisco. Right, right. You know, that's like, you know, but you're, the people who come out to see you and know you are of that age that they would remember the work mm -hmm. that we did in San Francisco. Hey, we've run out of time, my friend. It sh shot by. Well, I mean, it, 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 but not time wasted, may I, may I add. No, I thought it was kind of interesting, right? Oh, absolutely. And let's do it again next week, okay? You got it. All right, ladies it. and gentlemen, the fabulous, the marvelous, the you got to go see him wherever he's playing, when he's playing, Larry Bubbles Brown. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Here we are. Yep, there we go. And I'm Alex Bennett once again back with you. I love Bubbles, and I love talking with Bubbles. I, I know it doesn't, it doesn't seem to get the kind of numbers um, in the video end that we normally get uh, when we run video, when I'm doing talking for a half hour or when I've got uh, uh, Durst on. But it's only because Bubbles is such a Luddite that he doesn't have Skype. He doesn't even have, are you ready for this, he doesn't even have uh, internet he, in the normal way. You know what he's got? Yeah, he's got dial-up. Yeah, I'm not kidding you. He's got dial-up. Who has dial-up? Bubbles has dial-up. He says there are 50,000 people in San Francisco with dial-up. Go figure, okay? Got to wipe my glasses here so I can see something. Although with this big screen now, I don't know why I'm using glasses because I don't really need them. The thing is so huge. And I, I didn't buy it because of my eyesight. I bought it because it gives me a lot more real estate to work with, you know, um, especially my switcher that I use uh, for this program, which is uh, a, uh, a, a, which I always had is kind of tiny on the smaller screen. And now it's bigger and I can kind of work with it easier. So anyway, uh, I'm going to turn on the phones here, and we'll just see if anybody wants to call. We use a thing called Skype. If you don't know how to do it, uh, my suggestion to you is very simple. Uh, just go over to uh, GabNet Live. Uh, excuse me, GabNet.net. Go to when I'm trying. I can't do two things at the same time. I can't talk and tell you something at the same time. Go to gabnet.net, and over there on the left-hand side of the page tells all the ways you can get a hold of us, including a Luddite's phone number that you can use to call the show as well. Uh, we uh, put that into the mix as well. So you know, um, do it. Um, call right now, and uh, so you don't. You know, they used to say like, call now so you don't forget. Well, maybe you will forget. Uh, boy, I had, I had a day-to-day -day technically. I was doing all kinds of crap here. I, um, I, I have a thing I used to post the shows with, and I suddenly realized the company's no longer in business. And God forbid it, I sh it should go out on me, okay, or it should go bad, and then I don't have anything to cover. So I was looking for something else, and I had uh, a... Um, I went looking for something else to use to post it with, and I found it, but I couldn't get it to boot up. So I write the people, and they keep telling me, well, it might be this, might be that. Looks like it might be that it's trying to go to iCloud, and your iCloud isn't working. So I turned off my desktop on iCloud and lost everything, everything. But I did say copy first. So as I sat there, things started popping back up on my screen as it was restoring all, it was downloading all the stuff that was on the on the uh, on the cloud into my machine, so everything got saved. And then it was a very simple thing I had to do to fix this uh, program. Which, if it works, it'll it'll make my posting woes maybe easier. I don't know, but all I know is this program that I had, which was called Podcast Spitter, was terrific. And what I'm saying about posting the shows when somebody does a show like uh, Damien, I then fill out this thing and I send it. Uh, up to the uh, up to one of my websites 
and then it goes to everything. It goes to the on-demand, it goes to the Roku, it goes to uh, anything that needs a, a file to tell you what the programs are. Uh, and uh, it's very important to the operation here. I mean, you know, it means that Roku works really well. Well, that first caller, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, I, I hope you enjoyed your photography session last night. Why, uh, yeah. Why don't you uh, Why don't you frame your camera a little better? We can't. Yeah. I, uh, give me a second here. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thing on off. Okay. There you go. There you yeah. go. All yeah. right. Uh, yeah. I uh, turn your mic down too a little bit. You're You're blasting me. Huh? All right. A little too, A little too hot. Yeah. Turn it down. All right. How's that? A little more. A little more. A little more. A little more. Yeah. Right, now it's on zero. Okay. Uh, well, then then you're not turning down the volume. <laughs> no, I am. Uh, Are you it's, really? Uh, uh, let's see. Yeah. No, that's the volume. You got it? Uh, yeah, turn it down just a little bit. Yeah. Now talk to me. All right. Uh, so, yeah, I went. Uh, yeah, that's I good. just joined a new photo club. These guys are talented. Uh, it meets every two weeks. Uh, the, the first and uh, the second and third, uh, second and fourth Wednesday. It's two Wednesdays a month. Yeah. And uh, I saw some of the stuff that these guys submitted. They are talented, talented people. Yeah. Uh, so what, what happens is they have professional judges. They come in, judge your stuff. And then if you take first place in a category, they send it up to a thing where there's 12 clubs and then they have national judging and, you know. Do you want to be judged? Uh, you know, uh, yeah. Uh, now See, I've, know always, I've always hated, subjective. I've always hated judging and I've well, hated it because all of it is subjective. I mean, yes, yeah, some people are that. just terrible at what they do, but as to whether, you know, if you take somebody who is a, a great original artist at some point in his life, people told him he sucked. Right. You, well, know, you know, because he had uh, a different vision. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean I have to listen to them, but some of their, uh, you know, some of their uh, uh, critiques, uh, you know, could help me learn, can help me become better. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you have to have a, uh, if you have a thin skin, uh, there's two things you don't do. You don't call Gabnet as a Republican and you don't get yeah. judged. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're you're what you're ready to be judged, I would suppose, because yeah, I, I have plenty of practice, almost four years. Four, four, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've been on the show almost every show for four years. Well, that's what my promise was. It, it, was it your promise? Yeah, I thought it was a threat. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. Back in the day when you offered me a show, I said I don't think that I have the time to do the proper prep to do it as well as my travel commitments uh, would interfere with it as well. I said, but I'll be the best panelist you could have. Yes, folks. You're, you're, you're all probably hating me now because I offered Phil a show. <laughs> but I, I felt that it would be a good show. You know, I, I, if, if I would have taken it, I would have made it a good one. Yeah. I would have done the prep. And uh, well, maybe that's what maybe that would be bad. Maybe you see, I. I can I say this? I people and I always used to get kidded by you don't. Uh, by a woman named Lynn Samuels who's dead now, so I don't get be given a bad time about her. That I never prep did prep, like prep is this God given word to broadcasters. You must you have to prep your show. You have to do show prep, and I tell people I'm prepping every waking moment of my day. You know, because I'm observing the world around me and I'm thinking about, hey, that I can talk about, but that I won't talk about. And I'll take a look at a newscast. But the idea that you sit down and you say, I'm going to prep with what I'm going to do. I never know what I'm going to do at the beginning of a program. I want it to be as much a surprise for me as it's going to be to the audience. And well, that way know, it has a it has a level of mediocrity that's never been reached. You didn't need to prep because you you had you had it down to a science when i helped you out at kmel uh you knew exactly what you were going to do you had a, a vision and and uh, you know you didn't really need to prep whereas um me for instance i can't sit there and go yada nana you know yada 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 uh i i thought that i would come well, up with uh interviews 
and that uh, that I knew enough interesting people that I could put together interviews and then, uh, you know, have have people talk to them. Yeah. And that's why I would maybe jump in a lot on your interviews because I was trying to see if I could do it. Yeah. But, uh, you know, you uh, uh, the fact is that, you know, we have two kinds of people now at GabNet. We have people who are, we could say, pro-ams. Okay. Yeah. Uh, because I, I I do think that uh, Damien is a, is a pro in every yeah. t- sense of the word, but he's right, he's still not, you could still call him an amateur because he's never worked the broadcasting business and he doesn't have the same kind of chops that I have or that Jack has. Uh, no, but he can go for a half hour and continue to come up with subjects. He doesn't get stumped. I, I listen to him. No, no, him I'm stuff. saying that he's a real pro. Uh, yeah. So, but I like I like people who are. You call amateurs. I'll use pro am here because I I think I will give him more. Uh, I want to give Damian more credit than calling him an amateur, uh, and I like that because they bring something different to the table that I would never bring, you know. Mm-hmm. Because I have spent years working this business and I have an idea of how you do it, and even though I'm getting older and I've changed it a little bit, I haven't changed it that much. But somebody else might come in. That's why if there's a young person out there who would like to do four nights a week on GabNet, I would love you to come do a show. And just, you don't have to do it my way. You will never get a a call from me about don't ever do that again or be better if you did this. If you want my advice, I'm happy to give it. But I'm never, in fact, Damien will tell you, I've never told him how to run a show. So you're a good judge. (laughs) Well, I, I just think that uh, I like broadcasters who have a certain innate quality. In other words, um, uh, uh, there was a guy, uh, I won't say, I won't give his name out because I just don't want to talk about him in that respect. But there was a guy who went to work at uh, The Quake doing a show. Yeah. I'll name him Rick Stewart. Uh, and when he started, he was a complete amateur. And I loved him. I thought he had a quality that was amazing, okay? Because it was that amateur quality, it was that quality of being different than the pro who comes on and puts his hand to his ear and does this and that, you know? And I love that about him. The problem was that as years went on and he became a professional, he lost a lot of that kind of... Spontaneity? That, you know, I'll try anything kind of thing because it's like a kid doesn't know you're supposed to touch the stove because it's hot, but when he finally touches it, then he'll never touch a stove again. Well, it's the same thing with it with a guy doing radio. If he doesn't know what the rules are, he'll play outside the rules and maybe find a whole different way of doing something or at least sound different. But yeah. once he starts getting burned a couple of times, like a program director meeting or a, a this or that or the other thing, by the time you get five years down the line, he's... He's a real pro, you know, and yeah. And and while he may still have a lot of that same quality, he doesn't have that same quality he had when he first went into it. And I like that quality. So if you're young, I doubt if you're listening to this show. So what am I doing? Or you're a woman. uh, uh, I would love to you if you would love to do a show here uh, at GabNet. I, you know, it would be my honor. Uh, to uh, mentor you through the process. And all you have to do at home is have a mixer and have a computer. It'd be good if you had uh, um, uh, maybe two computers. But, you know, we can work around that. I think Jack only does his with one. Uh, and, and uh, you know, yes, uh, you know and, and uh, the rest of it is pretty simple. I mean, I just have to teach you. Listen, if I taught Jack how to do it, I could teach anybody. You know, that was, I mean, now it's no problem. He knows how to do all that. You know, occasionally I'll get a call. Oh, something isn't working. I'll go, well, you know, okay, let's fix. You know, I can't fly out to sec Texas to fix it. So get somebody to come out to the house to do it. And, um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's not that difficult, folks. You know, you just got to put a couple of programs on your computer, which I'll teach you how to, how to do. And you just flip a switch at a certain time, and you're you're going live on GabNet. 
Uh, so if you're interested, write me. And uh, don't be shy about it either. And don't think, oh, I'm too young. There are nothing but old farts on that network. That's why I want somebody young here doing something. I like somebody, I'm like somebody who get a thousand listeners when we're sitting here with a um, hundred and, and do it because they're, they're resonating with what is the, the larger part of the internet audience, you know? So yes, uh, Tony. You know what's interesting, what I used to like about your show? Mm. I'm just going to run this by. I'm not trying to tell anybody what to do. Would you ever be open, like, say if we gave you, like, a topic to, that, like, you wanted to talk about, say, like, Watergate, and you, we gave you, like, you know, time to, like, Give them the answer. The give them the, give Do you want to do like a show that's just topical? Give him, give him, that? give him all this. About? This show is topical, Tony. Haven't like, you paid like, attention say, say to it? One subject, if you wanted to talk about something. Well, uh, uh, Phil, do you want to answer that question for him? Yeah, you talk about the subject until it plays out or another subject comes in. Uh, oh, okay. So, so you bring up a subject, and if it and if the panel, uh, if it resonates with the panel, and all of a sudden you have uh, a conversation going, it'll it'll go for as long as it goes until. Well, it, you're it, basically saying what I was going to tell him is no, I will not come up with a topic. Oh no! I thought maybe uh, the uh, audience wants your to job. Uh, no, we we come, we come up with topic. topics every night, but we oh. go from one topic to another. This is a conversation. This is a bunch of people sitting around in the living room, talking to each other, and you know that kind of discussion doesn't necessarily have a topic, you know. That's true. But we'll go for a top on a topic for forty-five minutes, and then all of a sudden we're switching. You know, we'll be going from Trump to uh, what? How do you? What, what, what's your masturbation technique? You know. <laughs> I'm well, we won't uh, yeah. a, we won't ask you, Tony, because you probably don't masturbate. But actually, you know. I can tell you what I've been reading. But actually, my life is very boring, Alex. <laughs> he wants to get off the topic of whether he masturbates or not. Yes, Tony. Um, well, I, what are you reading? I guess it depends on the night. <laughs> What's on TV? I'm joking. <laughs> I, I lead a rather dull life. I realized. Well, well I, actually, I I know I don't I don't stuff. I believe that. I do. No. I'm very humdrum. <laughs> uh, do, do you have any risque comics? No, actually, I'm actually into reading like, like uh, true stuff, like uh, history and stuff like that. But true, true comics. Well, I actually read fantasy and stuff. I do. I'm into that. I actually have an idea for something. I was going to run it by Shecky first before I tell Alex. That's too late now. <laughs> no, because I don't want to interrupt the show. What were you going to run by him? You know what I was going to run by? I'm into yeah. fantasy games, right? Would you yeah. ever do? Would you ever let somebody do a show if they had to like play a game, like say a fantasy game, like Lord of the Rings, do like interaction with players? No. Somebody like telling a story. No. no. Okay. <laughs> I was trying to get Shecky to no. play. So I'll never play. Would you go for that, Patrick? Would you like a show about about video game. games on 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 Gabnet? Uh, yeah. You don't need to do that. You know why? Because actually, the, the system I'm using here is basically used by gamers to go online and play games so people can watch them playing the games. They're all over the internet. They're all over the internet. And, and so programs like this have kind of, uh, some of them are just made for that purpose. This one can do that, but it has certain things you flip and so on to make certain games work better than uh, they, than video would and whatever. But no, there are a lot of people who you go online, they're playing games. You go, I go onto my PlayStation and I sign onto this one channel, and there are like a hundred people playing games. You and you just and you just watch them. Play? You just watch them playing them. I think the game that they should play is chess. You know, you have two. That's a hard yeah, game. that that would be really exciting. <laughs> Yeah, that would be that. No, yeah, you could. That's no. Tough. I'll tell you, watching people, you know, they have these big tournaments, and yeah. people watch people playing these games, and I, it's not really that dull. It's pretty. It's pretty interesting, especially because I like gaming. I, I mean, but you just started getting. Should you play? Oh yeah, I I play constantly. You know, would you ever play fantasy games with dice, Alex, with other people? No, not that kind of crap. Oh, I'm into that. Not so that. Not that. I'm a gnome, and you're a, you're oh, yeah, you're the innkeeper. You Fuck you. Hey, you know, yeah, I see guys. I think you would like it. I'm being I honest. Playing dice on the side. Yeah. Well, I do. I play once a month. Like. No, I play like things like Tomb Raider because I. I yeah, the I only thing it. wrong with Tomb Raider is there's no part of the game where you're rewarded by her taking her clothes off. 
<laughs> he yeah. always has to play dirty games. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's, a Tomb Raider isn't a dirty game. Uh, and I just got this finished with this uh, new one that was a uh, oh, what's the name of it? I can't even remember the name of it now. Oh, Lara Croft. No, there's another one like it. I like those kind of games. I like oh, you do the, like the first person. You said, first, per, well, first person. Not uh, you do some shooting, but you also do jumping and running and climbing and uh, having to figure out certain puzzles and well, things you would like, like that. Prince of Persia, Alex. Me, that happened. No, I didn't like that. No, okay. No. I, I, I just like, this was part of the Uncharted series, and it's got a different name than Uncharted. And it's with two women uh, as the lead characters. And um, it was only, you could only get it on the PlayStation online. In other words, you had to download it. You paid 40 bucks, and you downloaded it offline. And I really, I've, I, I, have been, I got my $40 worth. I really did, you know. But the problem with video games is... You see a video game, you go, hey, that might be good. And then you plunk down 59 bucks for the motherfucker, and it sucks. I used to return them to the boutique and say I didn't like it or it wasn't working. They used to always do that. And how much money did they give you back for it? They used to give me store credit. You could pick something else out. Then I got wise. I used to go to Blockbuster and rent the uh, games you know, out. And, oh, but you, oh, well, Alex, you can rent them. Yeah, you can rent them, and that it costs like a fortune. You know, because I used to go crazy when it was a By the day, time you get through with it. And then what happened with PlayStation, PlayStation, I had a PlayStation 3, and I bought all kinds of games. I had all the Tomb Raiders, and I had Uncharted, and I had, uh, I can't tell you all the other ones that I had. Oh, I liked, uh, I liked Call of Duty, you know. Uh, and uh, then I bought a PlayStation 4, and I throw in my disc and said, well, I'm sorry, I won't play on this machine. Oh, well, you motherfuckers, make the goddamn machines backward compatible, you shitheads. That sucks, yeah. But, but you can subscribe for $19 a month to the PlayStation, blah, blah, blah. And then all these games that were on PlayStation 3 are on there. Game, and I did it for a couple of months so I could play a Tomb Raider. And then I said, fuck you, you motherfuckers. You know. Oh, so you would never play like the fantasy games? I was trying to. No, I, I don't play. want the fantasy games. No. You know. I have a life. You know, and that's you for people, like that's for people with no life like you, Tony. I'm, am I, I, am, I, am I insulting you, or am, am, am I simply speaking a truth? I don't know. I, I would just wonder. It would be cool. Yeah. Now, I never play those games, but I thought if I had one of those things, I'd want yeah. those uh, uh, deals where you could fly a plane, you know, uh, where you get behind the controls of a plane. He wants to kill the, uh, the Nazis, so I could see him like an axis and yeah. here. Where you know maybe you got a Cessna or something, and you and you actually learn to fly. Uh, oh, you can actually. Oh, you can play war games. Right? I have. I, 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 I. Yes, Mike. Yes, Mike. Yeah, they do have one, uh, Phil. Yeah. But you can learn how to fly an airplane. Once you get better, you get to fly it like a seven forty seven. Friend of mine showed me that game when he's driving, uh, flying a seven forty seven. Yeah. He goes. Uh, you want to try it? No, 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 yeah. no. But, you know, you, you, crash is permanent. Uh, what? I don't think the crash is permanent. No, it's not. It's not. But, but, um, uh, I, I had a game once I bought. Uh, this was in the early, early days of computers and gaming. And this was for the, what it was, a, what was it for? Was it, was it for a Mac or was it for a PC? I can't remember. But it was a uh, it was a flying game. It was a pilot game, and what you were piloting was a space shuttle. And it just happens that the space shuttle that you were piloting was Challenger. Oh, uh, shit, that crazy <laughs> Now this was before oh. it started selling before it crashed, and that's when I bought it. And then it crashed, and that game started to be worth a lot of money. Oh, shit. <laughs> you know. I still. Yeah, and you you could fly the shuttle. Yeah, right. Yeah, I, I, I think I'd be happy with just you know your basic plane that it would be a little more realistic, you know, uh, uh, like uh, yeah. yeah, well, like Cessna or something. Yeah, well, I mean, there are flying games, there are pilot games. You can find them out there. You know. So what what kind of game console do you need to fly one of those things? I think I would imagine whatever the console that a game is made for. I would say probably you could. PlayStation would probably do it. You know, he probably like the games, Phil. There are probably some games, some flying games out there by by uh, 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 
the, on the PlayStation. You've got the Xbox. Yeah. You know. Get to Nintendo, Phil. You know, I used to go to a bar uh, that was in the marina uh, called okay. Silver Cloud. Matter of fact, Alex, you came there for my 30th birthday, and they used to have a game, Pac-Man. It was on a oh. table, and you put the quarter in. Yeah. And I could go, I could I could do that all day, all night. Oh, uh, I would challenge you, Phil. I'm good at that game. Well, I'm no I good. I was pretty good. Do it pot and set the points. You can memorize it if you do it a certain way. Yeah, it's 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 been almost thirty four years since I played well, it. You know what, <laughs> that was a fun. Do you know what I you know game, what I yeah. really miss yeah. is pinball. Yeah. Uh, and now there's pinball for the iPad, okay. and they built some pretty realistic pinball machines. I mean, you know, you can even you know nudge them and make them do certain things that way. How do you use the flappers on an iPad? Uh, uh, you just uh, you hit the screen and it, they go uh, back and forth. I, I I can show you. Wait a minute. Does it have the feel? Huh? Does it have the feel? You know, of uh, the flap. Yeah, you know. I mean, it it's not. It, I don't feel the uh, the need for speed. I I don't feel that I'm. Uh, uh, it's as good. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me show you here. It just so happens that I have it easily available. Oddly enough. Oh, come on. Double click. Come on. Open up. Now I don't want that. Now double click, and there we go. And uh, hmm, this is uh, what is this one? War Pinball HD. And um, let me see. I, first of all, I'm going to turn my camera on here so people can see this. Okay. All right. Can you guys see it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me put it into play. See, it's in play mode now. Oh, there we go. You see? Uh, raise it up a little. Yeah, yeah, there it is. And if I let me find where I where I can click on it just to get it to go. I think it's here. I think it's there. Uh, let me see here. Uh, what do I? I, no, I, 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 think, I, I don't yeah. know. How, I don't know how to start it. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I don't. Like, hold on a second. Uh, resume. Okay. Oh, I see. Here's what I got to do. You pull the plunger down. See. And then the thing goes around, and then you got to hit the flippers. Or you, they see I hit hitting the flippers. Yeah, you yeah. see the flippers there, yeah. the flippers up above, and there we go. Oh, I lost it, but that's uh, that's it. It's it's, it, it's very realistic to tell you the truth. Um, so, uh, but uh, but I you know I don't find it. It's still a, there's nothing like a physical pinball machine uh, if you really want to have a cheap thrill, and. Uh, as I say, uh, the best guy I ever played against, and he used to come in and just wipe me out every time he'd walk into the bar, was Al Franken. Out of a job now. He's a good pinball. Well, you know, he's probably back to pinball. He must have good huh? He's hustling pinball? That's yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I mean, pinball, what happens is you get a pinball machine. Uh, and I know this is getting dull for some people out there, but fuck you, okay? Um, you get a... Um, 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 a, a, a pinball machine that you like. You like the scheme and you like the way back. it plays and so on. Where'd he go? He said he'll be back. Okay, goodbye. Anyway, um, and then you, you, you play it continually because you start to get one with the machine. Because the thing I like about pinball as opposed to video games is it's physical. It has physical properties, you know, there's the ball, and there's the, you know, it moving around, and you being able to use the flippers at the right time and flip it over to another place, and to get it right on the flipper in the right place. So you get this, this almost this oneness with the machine. And once you get to really know a machine, you can rack up some pretty high scores. But, yeah. you know, the problem with that is they're usually, they were usually in bars, okay? So not it's not the problem wasn't that I don't drink I bought cokes right but the problem is is that when you've got it in a public place it's not yours it's not sitting in your house yeah people play it and they beat the shit out of it so you could come back a week later and the feel of the machine has changed because the bumpers have gotten a little shabby or the yeah. the club doesn't go out and get a guy to come in and fix it up and you know tune it up so that it works really well. Maybe a flipper gets a little loose and it doesn't have the same. So 
it, when you find a machine that's in good shape and that it plays well, that, that's really, it, there's nothing better than that. With, with I remember uh, you took me to the 2 a.m. club in yeah. Mill Valley. Yeah. And you were playing on the machine. I was not interested in pinball, but uh, uh, you were. I got I got I got an introduced to pinball at ball at Screw Magazine, because Al yeah. Goldstein went out and bought a home pinball machine, and, it, and Bally made some very good home machines. They were just a little scaled down from the big ones, but I learned it was like based on Fireball, and I uh, I played that machine continually because it was free, right? You didn't have to put a coin in; you just press the button again, and it went. And uh, that's where I got hooked on pinball. Because uh, that that machine hooked me, and from yeah. then on I played pinball a lot. One of the little secrets about my life I rarely talk about. And, pinball wizard. Yeah, and I got to know a guy named Roger C. Sharp. He's still rather well known in the business, and he was a writer about pinball and op and and took over a uh, an arcade, uh, and it just it waxes so poetic about pinball and about you know, the history of pinball and the first machines and what they were and where they were. Where is everybody tonight? Whatever yeah. happened to Scott? Did, is Scott dead or something? Oh, uh, yeah. must, he must be traveling. Brian, Brian we haven't heard from, oh, yeah. you know, since we came back from uh, uh, time off. Is he, I hope he's okay. Hey, house rest. Huh? He may be under house he arrest. Maybe under house arrest. Yeah. So Brian, if you're out there, call us. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, maybe he started traveling. Could be. Yeah. It, you know, who knows? I mean, sometimes you people just go away. I know that uh, Jeff is uh, down in Florida. He called us last night, but maybe he can't oh, call cold. tonight. Huh? It's uh, cold down there. I think Alex right now. Yeah. Oh, oh, cold. poor, it's poor York. Florida. It's cold down there. It's like in the 30s. I, I was so happy. You know what? It's, it's going to be five degrees in New York City. I know. I, show, I know. I got the snow. Now, I, I, know, I know, Patrick, it's going to be maybe minus 10 in oh, Wisconsin. Okay, Wisconsin. But, but, you're, you're, you're in Wisconsin. I'm in fucking New York City, you know? Yeah. But the thing is, even for us, um, this early in the winter, uh -huh. it's colder than usual i mean normally these temperatures hit about the end of january and the beginning of february and it's only a snap for like two weeks and then the weather starts getting warmer and you move into spring but we i mean um it was last week i got up at like 3 a.m to take a week and it was minus five so i posted that and i said i'm very grateful for indoor plumbing and then I woke up like at 7.30 to get up for the day, and it was minus 9. And I'm like, it got colder, and even though the sun was out, it, the temperature dropped. And, um, Do you and go I, outside when it's that cold, uh, Patrick? Actually, I went out. Um, I took my godson out for lunch today. Yeah. And it was 7 degrees today. And let me tell you, it... It's goddamn cold dealing with the wheelchair because yeah. your hands are on metal. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Why don't you get yourself a thermal wheelchair? Well, you know, what I would love to find, and I still haven't found them yet, are a pair of gloves that are thin enough but actually are, you know, warm and don't tear apart. Like, I can just see the wheels in uh, Phil's head going neoprene. Well, the problem was, with that is... I was thinking leather. You know, the, the, kind, the kind that workmen use? I have leather, and they're tight, sort of, but yeah. they're just too thick to really do anything. So I end up doing stuff without my gloves on, and yeah, it, it's cold. So 30 degrees, 20 degrees, I'm good. But below that, it does get miserable. So... The good thing is I had a nice lunch, had a nice talk with my godson, and then I went out back into the bullshit and had to put the chair back in the car. Wow. Wow. Hey, uh, Alex, there's some sort of th the news media is calling what's going on in New York uh, or in the West, on the East Coast some sort of bomb or... Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, they, what do they, they, they call it? They, they call it a cyclone is what I saw, and I think I saw the word bomb, snow bomb, yeah. or something like that. Or something bomb. 
Yeah. And uh, what's the difference between this so snowstorm and other snowstorms? Oh, well, I don't know. On this night, we recline rather than... No, that's... Pa that's uh, Hanukkah. Hanukkah. That's Hanukkah. Yeah. Uh, or, uh, uh, it, 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 let me see here. Uh, it, the um, I don't know. I really don't know. All I know is it's fucking cold. You know, I mean, I, I wasn't out today. I've, I'm, I've gone into what we call... Um, uh, Depression, I think, is what it's called. Just being in the house and, and not being able to take a walk. I mean, you couldn't go outside today. I mean, you were up to your puppet in snow. Uh, what was that uh, uh, Jack uh, Nicholson movie where they were up in this hotel? Oh, The Shining. Uh, the Shining. Yeah. 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 Maybe you're going through I something. Was I, 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 I was about ready. I was so depressed today. I didn't talk to girlfriend at all. And I think the only thing I was going to do was write red rum on the on the window. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, it was, it was, it was, it, but it, it's, it's not fun. And then on top of it, I don't know, this fucking landlord. What happened? I think you're supposed to have a certain amount of heat coming up in this weather, and it's, it's not hot and, enough. And I say that he probably does, but it's so cold that the heat probably can't keep up with the, uh, the level. But of, it has uh, in the past. Chill. It has in the past. Chill. Believe it or not, yeah. Uh, you know, it's just a matter of, hey, turn up the heat, spend the money, yeah. you know? Oh, Jeff, I, speak of the devil. I, I go in, in, into hey. the kitchen, and in the kitchen, uh, hi, 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 Jeff, and, and you've got tile in the kitchen, all right? Yeah. Uh, it's freezing in there. And it even has a radiator in there, but it's freezing. Now, in uh, here, this is the warmest room in the, in the yeah. apartment because I've got all this equipment, and it's putting out with uh, heat and juice. You know, but uh, well, talking about heat and juice, uh, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, I, by the way, I was going to I showed you the thing and then I didn't go back to the citizens panel. Uh, here they are. There we oh, go. The, uh, I'm sorry, folks, that you had to see my ugly fucking face for a couple of minutes. Here. The, the, the electric is people losing heat and electric all over. In fact, the, the numbers went stuff. down just because people had to look at my face. Fuck but, you. Uh, <laughs> they're losing heat and electric all over the <laughs> East Coast. I was concerned that you might, uh, you know have an issue today oh good that's what i need next mm -hmm. yeah. yeah well you know when you I, no but the thing is the electric could go out in this build, building and we still have heat because yeah, the boiler's so a gas uh you know when the when the fire department came along I'll go to you in a second patrick when the fire department came along and when they had that fire and turned off all the gas in the building they wanted to turn off the gas to the boiler and my literally my super put his body between himself and the fire department and said that's as far as you go you know and um, and left and left the heat on uh you know in case because it was what november when we when this happened we didn't have you know yeah. we didn't have a, a gas until like july yeah so you know. patrick had something yes patrick yeah, I just wanted to compliment Jeff on his man bun and his hair extension. Oh, oh, because of the way, yeah. It, 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 <laughs> look at look look at your the picture of yourself in the monitor, and he'll you'll see what you mean. Oh it, yeah, what's behind? Yeah, me? it looks like you're a Rastafarian. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what is that? Octopus. That's uh, octopus. Oh, okay. That, that's my. Look, like, yeah, look like Rastafarian uh, Jeff. Yeah. yeah. Octopus. Okay, good. Anyway. So. Where are you in Florida, Jeff? I'm in uh, Tampa. 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 And, uh, where's Tampa? On the, on the I'm on the East Coast. coast. I'm East in the West Coast. coast. The West, West Coast. coast. Right. They kept uh, having trouble with signs down there yeah. constantly. So they, I think you find very few signs that say Tampa on them. Because people, kids would go around and put the word at letter X on the end of it. Uh, <laughs> I never did that. Oh, there was a there was a town in California out by Bolinas. Bolinas, and they were very how can we call it not socially. They were secret. They didn't want anybody they, coming there. They didn't want anybody coming to Bolinas because Bolinas is a beautiful little town, and it's right off the main road. So they would have a sign saying Bolinas. And every time they put one up, people in the town tore it down. So they finally gave up after a while, right? If you wanted to find Bolinas, you had to get a map. Well, you had to know where it was. Yeah, and then if you went there, they gave you dirty looks. Patrick. 
Well, we've got a uh, town in Wisconsin called Bong. B-O-N-G. Oh, really? Um, it named after a World War II flying ace named Richard Bong. But, you know, back in the 40s or the 50s when they <laughs> renamed the town, it was just a nice name after, you know, a local hero. And now, um, well, for the last you know, 30, 40 years, people go there because they think it, it's like Marijuana City in, in Wisconsin. Either that or they want to have their picture taken in front of the city yeah. sign. In California, in California, we have a town on the way up to Sacramento called Weed. Yes, I know Weed. Mm. I, used to, uh, I, I used to go to Weed all the time because I had a friend... Uh, was it in Weed? Uh, yes, he was in Weed. He had a movie theater in Weed. Yeah. And I used to go up there, and he'd let me like go in and uh, to the projection room and change reels. I would like flip from you know when you used to get the dot up there, and then you had to run the next reel. That dot. Huh? That, that dot is like a signal, uh, a pan or flash or no. What, what well, it doesn't. That? It doesn't really exist anymore because what you're know, getting you now do. is just digital. Okay. Yeah. But what, did what, they what, what, what that was for is, uh, I'll tell you, because this is how I change reels, right? You had mm -hmm. like your two projectors, right? Each reel is about 20 minutes, all right? So you put a reel on both of them when you start it off. So then the movie would run, and about 30 seconds before the end of the reel, and before the reel change, one of those dots came up. It was like a little round circle in the right hand, top right hand it's corner. For it though, huh? Uh, like a flash or a pan? No, or no, a... no. It was a dot. It was literally I know it was a dot. dot. But there was a name for that dot. No, I don't think there was a name for it. We called it the dot. I don't know. I, you know, and I was working the projection room. And he said, "Wait for the dot," and then, it, then at ten seconds, there was another dot. Okay, at that point, that's when you started the other projector. Okay, then you waited for a third dot to appear, and when that dot appeared, you pulled, flipped a switch, and it went from one projector and turned the other one on, so that you hopefully would have somewhat of a seamless difference between reels. Although, if you go, if you saw it in a theater, you remember how it was kind of a little jarring when they changed reels. But now they don't do it anymore because they're digital. And also, theaters went to really large reels. So they could put a whole movie on one reel, and mm -hmm. uh, they could be run you know, by automation and so on. So uh, the, the day of the dot uh, up in the corner is, you might see them on old prints, on old movie prints uh, that, they, that they show. You know, uh, so uh, that's, that's that deal. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, but I, uh, you know, I, uh, uh, I, I used to change the projectors up in, up in weed. Uh, and, and then we didn't smoke marijuana and didn't know what it was practically. And so the name weed kind of had a different connotation. It was just, Test. you know, something, mm. why the, why would you name your town weed? And it Can was, you hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, my mic was off. And it was near, it was near Shasta. Yeah. And, and it was uh, on the way we, to where I work, which was Klamath Falls, Oregon, which you then went over through the pass yeah. and all of that. And I thought it was Highway 97. The yep. To Sacramento. Uh, or if you went uh, through the Delta, uh, you, uh, you wound up in weed. Yes. No, if you went straight up, I think it was five. It was uh, 99. Was 99. It 99. 99 runs into 97, which is where weed is. Uh, yeah. So, and then he went through the mountains and you go to Mount Shasta. Now, let me tell you about this. This is the strangest thing. Did you know there's a cult up there? Probably. Called, called, the, called, called the, it's, it's in the middle of nowhere. I wouldn't be surprised no, if there was several. <laughs> they're, they're called the I Am Society. I'm not kidding you about this. I know about this because I've seen them walking the streets of Mount Shasta. Okay. They wear, I think they wear purple. All right. And they have a belief, and their belief is Christ is going to be reborn on earth. It's just the method of that rebirth that has a lot of questions going for it. There is, according to them, a gi giant black panther living <laughs> on Mount Shasta. And then, yeah. by the way, if you can find it, there are also crystal temples on Mount Shasta. <laughs> where the panther lives and they believe that if one of their people 
mates with the Black Panther, Christ will be reborn on Earth. That's what I mean. They're I swear to you, look it up. Money. Look it up right now if you want to Google it. The I Am Society, and it's not a bunch of people who have dog food. Uh, the I Am Society, and it, they really do exist, and they really do believe in that shit. Yeah, and, and up in that area, they also have the group that uh, wants to separate Northern and Southern California and into two states. Well, I was I was always for, I was I was always for that when I was a kid. I yeah. thought that was a great idea. Who yeah. wants those assholes from, you know, I Southern California that. drinking all our go- <laughs> drinking all our goddamn water, you motherfuckers? Go we'll find your own wall. water. So you really are an isolationist. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> anyway, so uh, uh, I uh, and I climbed Mount Shasta uh, at one point. Uh, yeah, a, a very big mountain, and it, it, well, you start about halfway up. You take a ski lift to the top of the ski lift, and then you start walking, and you keep walking, and then rocks are coming down at you, and you have to dodge avalanches. I'm not kidding you. It was not fun. I got within 300 feet of the summit, and I had to turn back because it was going to start be, being dark. And the, the problem with it was you'd say, well, why would you stop at 300 feet? Or maybe it was even less than 300 feet, like... A hundred feet. Well, no, it was because that whole mountain is like shale. So when you would walk one step, you went back two. So, I mean, it it would have taken me another hour to go that 300 feet, okay? Stuck Uh, up on top. Yeah, so I didn't make it all the way. But I got fucked by a panther. So that was, uh, you know. uh, (laughs) But you didn't didn't fuck the panther, though. Huh? No, I didn't fuck the panther. Panther fucked you. I'm not a panther fucker, for crying out loud. Not a panther is running around saying, me too. Yeah. (laughs) Hashtag me too. Well, I haven't talked about the I Am Society in years, but I found them just weird. Oh, you're talking about uh, streets and, and... City names. I used to live on Mary Jane Way in oh, San okay. Jose. All right. It was the most stolen street sign in San Jose. Well, you know, we're... we're now, we're, now they mounted about 17 feet in the air so nobody can get to it. Yeah. Well, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about... Uh, as long as we're talking about weed and Mary Jane... Uh, you people out in California have a wonderful thing going for you right now in that you uh, you now have legalized uh, recreational marijuana. And Jeff Sessions, who is a party pooper, yeah. Yeah. yeah, says, I want to enforce federal law. And I, he actually spoke in front of Congress a couple of months ago and said, uh, and what kind of person smokes marijuana every, uh, anyway? Not the kind yeah. of people we would want to hang out with. Now, oh, well, I'm sorry, Jeff, book, but you're not the kind of people I want to hang out with. Remember the book 1984? This is just Soma, uh, the drugging of the people, uh, the, you know, people standing in line. Well, waiting wait, wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second, pal. What was alcohol? Uh, alcohol was not Soma. Uh, the Soma, oh. is, you know, when, when I look at. Soma was a pharmaceutical. Thing. This happens. You know, here's the difference. Here's the big difference. All right. Marijuana grows out of the fucking ground. It's natural, okay? No, and you, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Grow. Let me finish. Let me finish. And you mm. don't have to do much to get it into a smokable form. You turn it upside down, let it dry out, and then you crumble it up and smoke it. All right? But with liquor, you you got to put it through all kinds of processes before it becomes alcohol. Uh, I beg to differ. I, I had a friend with a, had a major grow on his property. And uh, he, he I had, had a major grow on my ass. What? Well, what happened was, uh, you know, I said to him, well, how did it work out? And he says it was shit. The stuff, the stuff was not, uh, it, it wasn't powerful. It wasn't whatever it is that they wanted. And uh, there is a science to growing this well, shit. There's a science to growing it, but it's still, it's natural. It grows out of the ground. It's not an unnatural product. The stuff that the stuff that they're selling now, they have hydroponics and all I sorts know, of I things. I know that. I understand that, but I'm still saying it's natural. You know, it's like something God decided to leave behind for our pleasure. It's, still it's, like, an heirloom, it's like an heirloom tomato. Uh, yes, it's, 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 it's like an heirloom tomato. It's 
Yeah. Nah, hey, making liquor is nothing more, you know, the, uh, what was it? It wasn't the priests. It was the the friars, uh, you know, made wine and vinegar and all of those things. It, it's a, That was, is distilling uh, spirits is as natural as anything else. No, it isn't. Uh, but yes, Patrick. The only one I'll give you on that one, too, is wine. Because all you do is you ferment it. Right. Yeah. No, you fer you ferment wine, but there's a bigger process to making alcohol. Well, what right. about and beer? You know, beer. You need hops. You need. Uh, uh, well, beer. Uh, beer actually. Oh, a beer. Barley. Beer actually. If we were to pharmaceutically look at beer, is a very healthy uh, mixture of stuff. In, in other words, it's not bad for you physically. Uh, it's got yeast in it. It's got fiber. I mean, it's got a whole bunch of things. Uh, so, you, you know, beer is, is maybe the most wholesome of all these things we're talking about. It's kind of like bread in its own way. Uh, but I'm talking about alcohol, like gin and whiskey and so on. Mm -hmm. You got to have a still, you got to, uh, you got to go through a whole process to make it work. So, you know, well, you know, so it takes a little, little, all more I'm effort, saying but, is, all I'm saying but, to Jeff Sessions is, you know, you fucking Republicans, you're such states right people and then when it comes to pot you forget states rights and this state well, we decided they had the right to do it nation, huh? a whole nation dumbed down by marijuana a you whole know, nation there was cells. a whole nation absolutely besotted by booze you don't understand how bad booze was before prohibition that's why uh, prohibition okay. came to be mm -hmm. Husbands would get drunk. They would spend all their money. The kids yeah, get, were, were wearing rags, and they come home and beat the shit out of their wives. Got six people here. Of the six people, I never knew anybody. How many of you have had booze in the last two weeks. Hmm? I didn't have any. Oh, you have. Okay. I had a beer. Yeah. Had six. How many? No, I had. Uh, I had wine. Oh, oh wine's not booze, according to Alex. No, uh, it's it's it, 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 it. However, it is a. How can we call it? I mean, I'm, I, I, although I had a, I, had a I, I, I went out to dinner with my business manager, and he ordered a wine, and he knows wines, okay? He says he'd been to the vineyard in Italy, uh, and uh, he ordered the wine, and I don't normally drink wine, but I took a sip of it, and then I said, give me a glass. This was so good. I mean, it was ambrosia. It was like uh, from the gods. Wow. You yeah. know the, you know the name of it? No. Yeah. Who wants to tip of you back? I, 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 I think it was called Boone's Farm or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Strawberry. <laughs> no, but yeah. but all I'm saying is is that, you know, how dare Jeff Sessions say anything about this when he's got to be a, for states' rights. He's a Republican. He They yell for states' rights, and yet when a, a state finally decides, well, this is the way we're going to go on the marijuana question, oh, no, we're going to arrest anybody who uses marijuana. And we've got we'll have losers a that are doped up now that we're having to support with welfare. Why, you know, uh, you don't need to give them legal marijuana and, and dope them up even more so that we have to give them Why more entitlement. Dope them up even more. I mean, come on. I mean, uh, uh, I've, I've smoked pot in my time. I, I've never had a problem with it. Do I look like I'm the uh, I'm a pot smoker? Am I dumbed out by it? Yeah, a little bit. Uh, you know, your brain cells. You know, it's it, oh it's yeah. Well, what what the act. fuck happened to yours? Because they've gone somewhere where we can't even find them. <laughs> yeah, it's the part of the class that made the top half possible. The bottom Thank half. Thank you very much, and we appreciate it. Yes, yes, Patrick. <laughs> Uh, I have a good friend of mine. That, well, the end result is he's homeless somewhere out in California at this point mm -hmm. and had been for the last I don't know, 12 years, something like that. But anyway, when he was still living here and doing his normal thing that we all do, mm -hmm. um, he had his own, he had a closet where he grew his own pot and uh he did very well with it he didn't sell it it was all for his own use and i saw the worst aspect of him smoking pot which was he discovered that um you could use snow in a bong and it gave a different filtering 
and he thought it was great. So this is a guy who is a chemical engineer, all right? I mean, he's smarter than most of the people that I know. Yeah. So he decided he would take one of his bongs and put a little bit of water in it and put it in the freezer and just leave it in there for a little while. And then, you know, maybe it, it would have like a little bit of uh, ice on it or whatever, you know. In the meantime, he's smoking a joint and he forgot about the fucking bong and he heard an explosion in his uh, freezer. And he, and he told me that he said, the glass everywhere. And I said, okay, number one, what happens to water when it freezes? It and he bad. just so fucking say a word to me. I said, well, see what happens when you smoke pot? You forget just basic thing so that 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 was one of the funniest fucking things I've ever heard or saw didn't he have a, didn't, he, didn't he just think to take uh, the bong water and just put some ice in there that, and that's what i said to him i said couldn't you have crushed up some ice and and he he just Duh. and it was a um he paid like 300 dollars for it it was it was made in south africa or something it was and I, I saw it. It was a nice, you know, he had a nice collection of them. And it was this particular one he did it in. And he said, I heard it explode in the freezer. <laughs> and he said, I sobered up immediately. Yeah. So. But, you know, the thing is that, uh, you know, I mean, I've known people who are potheads who are, you got a problem. All right. Just like I know people who drink alcohol and have a problem, I also know other people who drink alcohol and don't have a problem. They do a few, uh, maybe a drink now and then, and they, they're they not alcoholics. Then I know people who smoke pot recreationally, and then there are pe people who just do it all the time. You're going to have those people. And in, in the, with those people, I would rather see them on pot than on booze if they're going to be addicted to something or, I, I don't even want to use that i don't even want to use the word addicted i think habituated mm -hmm. is a better uh, term here uh, young people uh they say that you know as they're they're still forming you know maybe they're 16 years old 18 years old uh that uh, the pot kills the brain cells and and uh, and has uh, some very definite effects on them. Uh, uh, anything well anything the uh, listen there's alcohol fetal syndrome which when mothers drink their kids are born with certain brain problems because sure. of the use of alcohol certainly i we that's why pot is not being made for 16 year olds they they in fact i think what's the minimum age in california for buying this stuff 21 I is think. it 21 yeah. yeah, but uh, hey, you don't think they get it? When I was 16, I got it. No, but, you know? but, and I got alcohol, but it's a little harder to get and you're not going to do it that much. Okay. Number two, you can't really afford it. I mean, it's not like they made pot legal in California and all of a sudden it's going for $5 a pound. You know, you know that's not the, the case. It's on TV. You know, that uh, like uh, uh, less than an ounce was almost $200 for some of those. Uh, I remember it was $200 a pound. <laughs> yeah, well, I remember. Yeah, I remember that myself. You should have invested. In, in fact, so. years ago, years ago, a, a friend of mine. A fr boy, we're low on the people watching the show tonight. Well, f fuck all you people. You have to watch the show later. Uh, and some of them do. A lot of people do. Um, when I was, uh, I, uh, some guy said to me, I, he says, I just bought a pound of pot. He said, would you hold on to it for me? So I said, okay. He said, if you want to dip into it every now and then, take some out. Well, the guy disappears. And I'm stuck with a pound of pot. Now, you would say, oh, that's not terrible. Hey, you got a pound of pot. You ever tried to get through a pound of the same pot? <laughs> I'm, you oh, know, it, it, every, every time you go and get pot, you get a slightly different blend, a different type. And on top of that, this was in the days when it was all coming from Jamaica. And you know the reason they did all those giant spliefs? That's how much it took to get high with it. So I was stuck with a pound of this shit. I never got through it. I finally I think I threw it away or gave it away to people's party favors. Yeah. You know? Anybody got up one or 500 bucks? Uh, no, it was only, I think he so only spent sure. 300 bucks for the pound. For yeah. the pound. Uh, but... Uh, 
Yeah, it's it's expensive, and it's, it also there's a thirty percent tax on it in California. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. California stands to make over a billion dollars a year in taxes wow, from this. Oh, easily. They'll, they'll yeah. waste the money. Huh? We should, should do that. Point, oh. waste the money. Well, we should. We should have golden golden roads in the next couple of years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine if the legalization of pot was able to give us free health care? Yeah. Now my question is, I know, I don't know this because I haven't looked at the California situation. Are you allowed to grow it? Yes. If you want to grow it privately, plants. huh? Six, six plants. Six plants. Okay, that's enough to take care of you for a year. You yeah. know. Uh, and if if, if you, they did a uh, thing on desert hot springs, and they were talking on the news about it this morning. Mm -hmm. And down there, it's by Palm Springs. It's a, it's yeah. in the middle of nowhere. And they were Not selling that area. three years ago. They were selling acres of land for sixty grand. Now they're going for no less than a million dollars because they're permitting all these areas to have pot grows. Wow. Well, I, did you see? Did you see the latest uh, guy who's uh, the latest entrepreneur going into growing his own? Is Mike Tyson. Really, he's oh, bought, yeah. he's bought a plot of land, about forty acres, and he's going to have uh, Tyson's. I don't know. Tyson. The, the, we have a guy here in I town. If, I wonder if we can use the name Tyson. The chicken people might go after That's him. Right. So, yeah. so Tyson's got forty Tyson acres in the mule. Huh? Forty acres in the mule. Something like that. You know, but I it may be more than that. Maybe like four hundred acres. But it's out. It's outside, way outside of L.A. And there's a guy here in town that's. Uh, manufacturing he's one of the two manufacturers they let start up this last month and he's tied to willie nelson and the Jimi hendrix foundation along with a couple other groups and he's starting the you know the basically the marlboro in a box type pot you know rolled up cigarettes in a box called california's finest that's a good that's a good idea pretty soon there are a lot of people working for him with very tiny hurting <laughs> fingers after a while but you know uh, oh, baby are they gonna and, and you know they'll have to be dovetailed because that's the only way people want their pot is a dovetail joint right um, what would they make it out of? But that? here's what I wonder. You know, uh, when I when I, a few years They're forming unions too, Tony. A They're few, forming unions. A, a, a few years okay. back, I, I had a friend who lived up uh, near uh, 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 up in the Lake County, and we would travel up to see this guy she worked for, who was a doctor, and he made most of his money. He lived in Mendocino, and he made most of his money giving out marijuana recommendations. You know, he'd charge you 200 bucks. He'd write a mar marijuana recommendation. Then you could go into a... Huh? That too. Yeah. And you, that. you could go into a, uh, 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 you know, one of these... Uh, uh, Dispensary. One of things. Dispensaries. And you could get pot, okay? Um, but the thing is that uh, when you went to Mendocino, that's where you got the best marijuana. Just like I said, imagine you can get the best steaks in Chicago. Okay, because the closer That's where the term skunk came from the, the, was up there in Mendocino. Yeah, the closer to the to the the source, uh, the better the product. And uh, after uh, I got, that's when I got uh, uh, shingles in my eye right up oh, here. Really? And I so I went to see this doctor, and he said, "Well, take go to get this stuff, and you know, take it." And we then we went back to him because she worked for him, and and he said, uh, "Well, I'm closing up. Come on upstairs." And we go upstairs, and he starts bringing out the pot. And this is the Mendocino stuff. My no, fucking, no seasons, huh? my fucking God. This was the best weed I've ever smoked in my life, okay? Uh, and I was just righteously high. I'm actually curious. But I, but what, what, where this pot came from was that in the mountains of Mendocino have been for years all these people running plantations and growing this stuff. And they've been like one step ahead of the law, and they know how to hide it so they can't see it from the air and so on and so forth. And these guys really developed the breed, okay, developed the pot that you're talking about, Phil, that's more potent, that's, that's better, that's, that's been formulated. They, they're, they're superb horticulturists. And I'm wondering what's happening to all those independent growers. Are they now out of work, or are, are they somehow involved in this new industry? I would some imagine are, some are. You know, a lot of them were growing on government land. You know, they they were hiding the no, they uh, weren't. Their grows. No, they weren't. 
Oh yeah, I had a friend. They were up uh, in the mountains. They were in the mountains near Mendocino. That was in government land. Uh, oh, uh, outside of uh, Russian River, uh, there's another town that starts, I think, with an O. And I had a friend who had a ranch up there with 200 acres, and Not right so behind him, uh, yeah, right behind him was a 5,000 acres of government land, and I would see these guys. Uh, try to come through his property because I went hunting up there once and uh, they uh, they they came over and they gave me this bullshit story that they were looking for water but uh, I knew what they were looking for. They were looking to go through to get over to their grow and uh, uh, you know, they uh, it was all cops we were up there yeah. <laughs> shooting. Oh no, yeah, and, good. Uh, Fine. And hunt. You know, but but I'm, uh, I'm just tell, I'm telling you that I think this is a wonderful thing that California has done. I, you know, I resent the fact that it's legal here in New York, but I have to have cancer in order to get it. So, you know, I, 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 I want to feel that I can just buy it for recreational purposes. And I'm not a, I'm not a big smoker. You know, girlfriend always has a joint around and every night she'll take a puff off of it. Right. And then she beats me. That's uh, all you eat is a puff with that stuff. It, it, oh, I know. I don't. You know. Sometimes she'll ask me if I want to do it, and occasionally I'll say yes. Cause I don't really. I've lost my taste for pot. Okay, it's not that I'm against it. I just, you know, so what? Uh, yeah. And so, uh, but I, uh, she'll, she'll smoke it, and um, uh, you know, I just like to know that she could go into a store somewhere here and buy it if she wants it. She has to get it from a source in California, you know, and so on and all that kind of crap. And Dam Damien said something very good last night that just yeah. resounded with me because it was just a, a plaintive cry of sorts. He said, thank God it's now legal. Now I don't have to worry about getting busted. Except if Jeff <laughs> Sessions get holds of him. But, uh, you Jeff know, Sessions what? isn't going to do jack shit because what? Jeff Sessions, wait a minute, Jeff Sessions can't yeah. because he uh, tries yeah. and there's going to be so much legal power going against him, he'll yeah. never be able to effectively do anything. Okay, well, why, why can't these people that want it for medicinal purposes use the oil? You know, I, I was talking to this guy. He Because he it's more fun to use the bud, okay? It's well, more I sociable. Mean, you know, there's nothing more sociable than passing a joint around. And I don't, well, that, uh, Patrick, no I'm sure, hasn't dealt with this. Jeff, have you ever done that at all? <laughs> yeah, you have. So you know what I'm talking about. Some, have you ever done it? Uh, come on, Phil, have you ever done it? Have you ever passed the joint around? Of course I have. All right, I then shut the fuck up. Oh, what do you? What do you? What side are you on? Years, you but, you know, what you what side are you on in this fight? For crying out loud! Yeah, but I, I just think that uh, the, the society's fucked up enough. They don't need more things to fuck. Yeah, them well, up. I, you know, I, you know, I, 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 I want to know what Trump's shooting up. Okay, because he's crazy on something. But now yeah. he, he says he doesn't do any drugs. No, I don't think he does. And I think it's time he started. <laughs> hey, tell my bucket list. I'm going to do it. Huh? Before I die, I'm going to do that. Going to do what? You better do well, it in the next couple of days. That's all, I'm being honest. I'm going to do that before I uh, crow. You never know when the bus is going to hit you. You yeah. know, Alex, in, in reality, you could go to one of those doctors, look them up, tell them you got a hangnail, and they'll give you a freaking card. Mm -hmm. Here in New York, it's a little tighter than that. You know, they didn't... They said right here too. Now they're doing it by text message. They didn't go. They didn't go loosey goosey on the deal. Okay. Listen, my doctor, my wife's doctor, is so frightened of things now, because of the way the government is, that she um, uh, she used to get cough syrup with codeine in it. All right. Yep. And believe it or not, it's really good for a cough. You got and she had a terrible cough going a couple yeah, of weeks ago. It's real good for a cough. Yeah. No, 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 no. But I'm saying that it's really good for a cough, you know? Yeah. And, you know, when I was a kid, uh, hell, your doctor is something you had, you had a cough there. Here's a prescription for terp, uh, coral, uh, was it, uh, turpin hydrate or whatever, coating turpin hydrate. Uh, and uh, when I was in the Navy, I had bottles and bottles and bottles of it because every time I would go to the God, you know, because I'm a hypochondriac, every time I would go to the doctor there, to the, what do they call it in the Navy? I forgot now. Uh, yeah, I want, yeah. forgot everything about the Navy. I want to not remember it, but I, I would go to the doctor. They just, no matter what was wrong with me, they give me a bottle of cough syrup. So, really? yeah, oh yeah. So I had bottles of the stuff lined up. I just sit there in my office, you know, 
Uh, but anyway, anyway, that's another story altogether. Um, so, uh, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, oh yeah. So she calls up the doctor. I, you know, she's got this really bad cough. She says, "Can you give me a prescription for some, uh, you know, cough syrup?" She asks the nurse, and a couple of minutes later, her doctor calls and says, "I can't." I said, "Why?" She said, "They're getting tough on that stuff." She, she says, "I could, tr- I could get in trouble if I give it to you." He, she says, you, "You're going to have to go to another doctor to get his okay." Uh, uh, like a pulmonologist, I think is what she, he said, and I'm going, my fucking god, you know, this this stuff was this was my mother had it in her medicine cabinet. So for I crying went to Kaiser the last time yeah. I had something like that, yeah, and they gave it to me with the coding. Yeah, coding but, to date, but, right? but but to begin with, you're not in New York. New York yeah. has gotten oh, yeah. really tough on this shit. You know, really, really. Meanwhile, my wife's being prescribed oxycontin for her back. You know. Yeah, it's really bad here in California right now. I've been dealing with that for three or four months. I mean, and how it's it's changing her into a fucking hillbilly. You know, it's really wonderful. Uh, You know, Alex, I remember when I was sick. My mother used to always give me Robitussin. Is that over the counter? That's over the counter. Yeah. Yeah. She's always having that handy. That that shit will help a little bit. You know, coral turpentine hydrate or codeine syrup works. Okay. Oh, by the way, I want to show you my that shirt tonight. I want to show you my shirt now. Let me remind to go back to, to the uh, citizen panel rather than holding on me. This is my shirt. You know what this is? This is like Carly Carly Motors here. Do you, do you can you see it? Wait a minute. Hold on. See a little bit. What's Carly Motors? Can you see that? Yeah, I can see it. It says Corley Motors on it. You know what this is? No. I did a I did a video game yeah. that I was on called Full Throttle for LucasArts. Oh. And this was the Corley Motors was the name of the motorcycle company and they made a uh, they made a t- they made a sweatshirt out of it and they of course gave me one cuz I was in the game. Well, Kevin is wearing I think he's wearing a Phil Lesh t-shirt. Yeah. 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 And uh, I have a question that may, one of you guys who might know from the Grateful Dead would know if this is correct. I photographed a guy a couple weeks ago called uh, Melvin Seals. He's an organist. And I was told that he was one of the original members of the Grateful Dead. Uh, here, I'll show you the picture. Hmm. He may have been from the Warlocks down in Palo Alto. Yeah. Uh, I got to look him up. but. Uh, right. Oh, uh, Jeff Kameni is the um, keyboardist for the Dead and Company. Okay, this guy is uh, Melvin Seals. Yeah, I've heard the name. All right. Hmm. Well, anyway. Where where'd you do that? Uh, at the UC Theater. Oh. Bur- I saw some guy in a documentary, and I said, "Great member of Grateful Dead, and I never heard of the guy in my life. I never heard of this guy either. But uh, they had so many people that would play with them, or just show up and play with them, or hang out with them for a month or two, and they were constantly changing. I think this like guy's Santana. name was like Santana. Zimmerman or Zinneman or something like that. I don't know, but he was in a documentary. And he said Grateful Dead, and I'm going. I I had, except for Pigpen, I had every member of the Grateful Dead in the same room with me doing an interview, and I don't remember this guy. You know. No, oh, you know, you, my guy or your guy? My guy. Yeah, I mean, they yeah. all the rest of them were there. You know, Garcia was there, and Phil Lesh, and uh, who are the rest of them? You could probably name all of them if you got a Phil Lesh T-shirt, Bobby right? Bobby Weir, Bobby Weir, uh, Kurtzman, Keith and Donna Gottachucks were there for a while. Yeah, uh, just a whole bunch of them. I got a friend, Jimmy yeah. Sanchez. He used to play with Moon Alice, and they were like a uh, a band that always played with the uh, Grateful Dead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you ever hear Moon Alice? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so, uh, it, you know, uh, I, I just think that the whole thing that's going on out in California is wonderful. I think it's wonderful mm-hmm. for the economy. I think it decriminalizes something that once made people criminals, which was not good, you know. So uh, we can't we can't argue about it, you know. Oh, uh, let me, I forgot to turn mm-hmm. your camera back on, folks. There you are. Uh, Nobody wants to see us anyway. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I never, they, except, ne- they never, they never, they know? never see me much except as a little thing down in the corner. So fuck you if you don't mind looking at me for a while. 
But uh, I, I sometimes I forget about it because I'm talking to you guys. I'm looking at the larger screen, and I forget that I didn't uh, turn things. Uh, you know, if I had somebody switching the show, that would that would solve the problem. But I don't. Any uh, volunteers? Uh, I I yeah. have one question. Yeah. Uh, what's the effect of California going to do with Colorado as far as selling pot? Well, what's going to happen? Well, there's another factor too. Uh, the state right next to California has made it legal as well, Nevada. And Oregon. And Oregon. So really, you can travel between, I think, all those states and not be in violation of the law. The pro uh, thing with Colorado was they actually had cops at the airport to make so sure nobody left with any marijuana. Uh, but uh, I think... They actually developed a tourist trade for that marijuana. Yeah, that and I think that's going to disappear now. Yeah, I think yeah. that's is that your what your question really is? Yeah. Well, I'm not so sure I know the exact question because like Colorado still is is not connected to those other states. Mm -hmm. You have to go through Utah, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll but, get you in Utah. Those Mormons, they 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 look for it. Yeah. They're, they're, they're going to be they're going to be the last ones to legalize it. You know, yeah. uh, but. Uh, you know, I just think Jeff Sessions is is asking for more trouble than he expects if he tries to even impinge on what is a billion dollar revenue stream for California. Does federal law trump uh, state law, or is it the other way around? Uh, I think it's have you ever heard of states' rights? Yeah, but I think federal law. The state can't be more restricted than the federal law. The, is that uh, the, way it works? Uh, the state. No. No, it wouldn't have cut this far if it, uh, that was the case. Yeah, states, according to the theory of states' rights, the states have individual rights over their dominion. Uh, there are federal laws for anything that crosses state lines, if I'm not mistaken. In other words, since this marijuana is not crossing state lines, uh, they really can't do much about it. Okay. Uh, also, that where they where they got into it uh, in. Uh, Colorado was that they said that because the banking system is federal, you can't use a federal bank for your drug profits to put your money in there. So they, they were literally buying big giant safes and having guards guarding the money every night because they had nowhere to go with it until finally they came up with a solution, which was using credit unions to hold their money. Uh, and so some credit unions were very happy to do that. And uh, and the federal government couldn't do anything about it, so that's where oh, that on. that's where the federal you know would impinge on it if it crossed state lines. Now, if it crosses state lines from a drug state to another drug state, there's some question whether any laws are being broken there. Yeah, you would think it would, it would be though. I think I think it is it is illegal to do that. Illegal to do what? To cross a state line, to you know, from like going from California to Nevada legally, I don't think it's legal. Yeah, but you know, these people aren't doing interstate commerce. In other words, they're not growing right. their pot and selling it in Nevada. They'll go That's to Nevada yeah. and grow it in Nevada, where nothing Correct. grows at all. So I don't know how they're going to do it. Tax thing that you pay. Let's say you bought it in Nevada, you paid the tax in Nevada, mm -hmm. and then you bring it over to California. Is there a tax due in California? Well, no. The thing is, you're not supposed to take the drugs out of the state. And now, you know, people are going to, but yeah. you're not supposed to. I think that it, it's up to the state to decide. You know, the latest thing, and here's the thing with, with Trump's people, is they have no concept. They think they can just wave their magic wand and do anything. <laughs> and, 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 you know, what Jeff Sessions has done here is certainly going to be questioned by the states, and a lot of money is going to be thrown behind stopping him. Uh, so he's going to be in the courts for years before they'll ever have a definitive uh, uh, answer to this question. Uh, so he's really barking up the wrong tree. I mean, if he wants to stop drugs, go stop drugs, go stop crack, go stop uh, heroin, go stop all those things. But some uh, people out in California who want their pot, Fuck you. Leave, leave well, them I alone. Thought all, I thought a lot of pot was coming over the Mexican border, and that no. was... Uh, uh, well, uh, no. The, 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 well, the main drug coming... Let's see here. What I remember. Yeah, the main drug uh, coming across the border... Oh, let me give you an example of something. May, about 98% of the drugs coming across the border is pot. Okay? Yeah. But since you have California legalizing it, 
They're not legalizing the pot that's coming over the border. They're legalizing pot that's grown in the state. So uh, what will that right. do to the that uh, will illegal hurt. That importation? Will hurt. That will oh. hurt the illegal importation. And so isn't that a good thing? Yeah, except they're not paying a 30% tax to the state of California. Well, they may not be a 30% tax to California, but they're still, they still got to, you know. They you don't think it would be less expensive? I'll tell you, while, we've got about 10 minutes what? left here, but I, I want to bring up one other thing when we're talking about legal things that you think you can do, but you really can't. Today, Donald Trump and his lawyers filed a cease and desist order against the people who are publishing that book. Wolf Banner? Yeah. To begin with, uh, I looked it up, and I, I wondered whether a president can actually file suit against can. somebody. I don't uh, think he can. And it's, it, he can, but it's harder, okay, because of his position. Uh, because, uh, uh, and especially in the case of a book. Now, he, this guy wrote a book. Maybe you don't think it's correct or it's wrong. How is it hurting your reputation? You know, how is it? You're not going to be able to get another job as a president of another country after this is all over. I mean, you know, what's the what? Well, you have to sue for damages, right? And what are the damages? Secondly, a cease and desist order. You know what that amounts to? Nothing. It says cease and desist. It is just simply that. And let's say I don't you cease. Don't. Let's say I don't cease and I don't desist. Well, your next step is you can then say, well, I'm going to sue you. Right. But he's never going to sue these people because really, as president, he has a very weak case. And it well, would just says, be a waste they, of his time. False. This is he just said false. this is a nuisance suit, you know, this is, or a nuisance action uh, to just try and, and scare them. I'm going to cease and desist. Well, cease and desist. Do you know what they did instead? The book's coming out uh, tomorrow. It was supposed to come out in about a week or two weeks. I, they I, they I, up I, the I, publication for that book. I bet you he helped a piece of that book, and that's what uh, he's promoting. But yeah. Patrick had a uh, had a thing on his Facebook, and I said something about it. Let Patrick. Do, yes, Patrick. Uh, talk about it. Well, um, Bannon. Hey, well, with what Phil said, I just repeated what I said last night on the air, which was I noticed that a lot of the people on the left, because Bannon uh, is bashing. Uh, the president and his family and the administration, mm -hmm. how all of a sudden, you know, Bannon uh, is taking a gospel and, and people are, you know, on the left are thinking he's great, when in fact, you know, just six months ago, a year ago, two years ago, he was a racist, he was a uh, liar, he was a this and a that. So I was just pointing out that observation. Um, but anyway. No, well, I, think, I, I, I think it was a decent observation you were making. I mean, hey, they did the same thing with Julian Assange and WikiLeaks. You know, uh, as soon as as soon as things turn uh, to to what they want to hear, uh, all of a sudden uh, now the well, guy is. Well, uh, there's uh, nothing is, worse. There's nothing wrong with yesterday's enemy being today's friend or vice versa. I mean, if, if they're working on your behalf and what you think is righteous, that's fine. If they suddenly turn bad, it's like you know who's getting a lot of bad press now. Oh, I'm so happy about this. Is Meryl Streep. Really? Uh, yes, yeah. yeah, because the, the women's movement, the Me, the Me Tours are saying she wasn't tough enough on Harvey Weinstein. Maybe she liked them. No, what she said is she didn't know this was going on, which I said, if, if, that, if you really believe that, uh, Meryl, you should get an Academy Award for Best Actress of the Year. <laughs> I, hasn't she? <laughs> you know, this should be her next Oscar for saying that she didn't, because there wasn't anybody in Hollywood who didn't know that. You know, uh, Weinstein's dog knew it, okay? You know? <laughs> I thought he sexually harassed his dog. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah. Or he wanted somebody maybe to have sex with his dog. Her. But, I mean, you know, I mean, um, um, so this notion that all of a sudden, here he goes, here goes the typical Donald Trump. I don't like what you're doing. I'm going to sue you. I'm going to cease and desist. Yeah, fuck you, cease and desist. We're going to release the book tomorrow instead of two weeks from now. Patrick? Yeah, my your original reason I raised my hand was, doesn't this fall under, and I forget what it's called, but where if you're a, a well-known person public in figure. the public eye, anybody can say anything about you. And you can't sue them because you are 
out in the public. So doesn't that fall under that? I mean, well, it, 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 as the more the more famous you are. Uh, the less you have the right to sue, the more in the public right. eye. Well, if you are a politician, wait a minute, if you're a politician, you, I could say that, let me, I'll say it right now, I hear that Donald Trump is a baby raper, okay? Now, can Donald Trump sue me? No, he can't. He can call me a baby raper and I can't sue him. Why? He's fucking president of the United States and he doesn't have the right to sue somebody for something somebody says about him. What about these actors that have sued uh, these uh, periodicals? Like, uh, what, what's the one you get on the on the checkout stand that you like? Oh, uh, uh, Enquirer. Yeah, Enquirer and a number. And there was another uh, another one where uh, uh, the wrestler sued uh, Hulk this, Hogan. Uh, Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan sued, and the thing went out of business. Now the these guys sued, and these and these were public figures. Yes, but they're that, not politicians. Yeah. They're not politicians, and the reason why politicians have a hard time suing, and uh, you'd have a hard time suing them, is because freedom of speech is 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 more uh, in in play I, there than it is I, when I, Hulk Hogan, I, when there's some I, kind I, of these politicians, these names, were, uh, you couldn't, they couldn't sue you because they're true. <laughs> yeah. Yes, uh, Mike. Okay. Uh, no, Patrick had his hand up first. Hey, by the way, no smoking on the show. Uh, <laughs> especially marijuana. Your your your, your second hand smoke is killing all of us here. Uh, <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Patrick. Go ahead. I um, I think Bill. Part of the reason that that those uh, actors have to is a lot of it has to do with photography, and not not you know what's being said, but actually. Uh, invasion of privacy versus just defamatory things like, you know, Meryl Streep is a bitch or something like that, but it's, you know, capturing nude photos of her in her yard, that sort of stuff. So I think that's what a majority of those lawsuits with well, those privacy things. things. Yeah. Privacy. So, by, the, by the way, by the way, do you know the difference between libel and slander? Uh, libel libel is. Spoken. Yep. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Yes, Mike, what? Okay, as soon as Trump gets out of office, then you can sue him. Am I correct? Uh, yes. I mean, right now, he's even safe, I think, from people going after him because he didn't pay them for something. You know, he's kind so of in that. As soon, so as soon as he gets out of office. He then then the people can, can, people can line up around the block. He's not going to get out of office. He's going to have three terms. You know, he's oh, he's going to die. He's going to die in office. I, I think he'll be dead. Yeah, I'm, 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 like, I'm still, I'm office. still betting, like and this may, this may be a hope actually that he, he's going to die before he's, he's out of office. Yeah. yeah. The way, he, the way he looks now, he looks like the Goodyear blip, ready to explode. And why does he wear that tie to cover his penis? You know, it goes all the way to the ground for crying. You know what? Because you don't get it up. Age, you need something under there to prep up the balls. Hasn't, yeah. hasn't he ever heard of a cod piece for crying out loud? Save us all for crying out loud. Sit up. Something for malaria to hang onto. <laughs> I started running on the wrong theme. So, you know. Hey, listen, uh, it's been, been a good night. We had a nice discussion here. We've gotten uh, uh, that whole, uh, you know, I just I just uh, think that, you know, I left California too early. Uh, yeah. You know, it, it's just a nice thing, I think, that's happened in California. And uh, uh, and then we'll, of course, uh, what's his name, will get elected governor of California. Um, uh, the, uh, the, no, there's some uh, people running against him. Uh, well, who am I yeah, thinking of? Uh, I'm thinking of what's his name? Uh, Gavin Newsom. Gavin Newsom. And he will be uh, a future president of the United States, I guarantee you. Not so sure that he translates to the rest of the country. Well, he will, believe me. He will. He's good looking. He, he's, he's good looking. He's, he's, he's a stealth candidate. Yeah. Hey, listen, I want to thank you all for being here tonight. Mike, you were here for a little time and then you went away somewhere. I don't know probably out to the back to smoke um no, anthony uh, thank you very much appreciate it uh and uh jeff of course down in florida with an octopus in his in his hair thank you uh and, and phil meyer oh good to have you back again tonight 
Patrick Blazik, and of course, Kevin, our very own uh, full-time Santa Claus. Uh, I'm Alex Bennett. We all give him a big, uh, big uh, salute goodbye. Just, you know, wave, wave, wave. Come on, wave. Oh, isn't that good? There they go. Okay, get lost. All right. Uh, that's, that's the end of our citizens panel. And that's the end of our, uh, our little program. Let me turn a few things off here so the next show can, can do it. Uh, let's see. Okay, go offline. There we go. And we're offline, and uh, I think we're, 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 we're through. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm out of here. I'm gone, and I will be back again tomorrow. We have Jack and Amy next with The Intersection, followed by Connections. I'll be here tomorrow night, 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time with The Ramble. In the meantime, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, there we go. I'm doing it right now. <laughs> tell her, I, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye.